And yesterday there was a raging debate as to who the better player was. Rudy Gobert or DeAndre Ayton from the Phoenix Suns. I don't think this is close. For the record, I don't think this is close. There is only one choice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you about that in three minutes, so you have to watch longer. My point (laughs) is... uh, (laughs) My point is, DeAndre Ayton is a lot of things on offense. He is really talented. He can shoot the ball. He can finish at the rim. My biggest complaint about DeAndre Ayton is he's soft. He's a nice guy. He's not mean-spirited. I appreciate his offensive game, but Jake, I think DeAndre Ayton has a whole lot of holes in his game. Yeah, I think there's a lot of maturing and growing that has to happen for DeAndre Ayton. And really, you know, I would even go as far as to say that I think you know, comparing these two, while it is a great comparison for conversation's sake, I mean, it's the ultimate, you know, um, you know, this guy versus that guy, this guy does one thing, that guy does the other, and they're pretty equal, you know, for what they do. But what I would tell you is that I think, you know, both players are soft mentally, in my opinion, but I think DeAndre Ayton is softer. I think DeAndre Ayton struggles with adversity and I, and I think you know for DeAndre Ayton wonderful offensive big man can shoot the jumper you know understand spacing in the pick and roll really well um is can be really nifty with it on un, like understands how to use space to his advantage but the problem is is that for all of that great offensive ability he's a turnstile on defense and the problem with being a turnstile as a big is the guy you're guarding is two feet from the basket. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's a pretty high percentage look when you're not good defensively. And we haven't even gotten into pick and roll defense or or switches or anything like that. So to me, you know, who's better or or maybe who's more valuable? I would tell you right here today, Rudy Gobert is more valuable. This is, this is a guy who's a three-time defensive player of the year. You know exactly what he's capable of doing on the defensive end. And I think, I, I will say this, as much as we've talked about Rudy on the show, I do think that his his reputation, if you will, or or maybe how he's viewed in the league, does suffer quite a bit because of the fact that the Jazz don't have perimeter defense. If he was on a team, and we talked all about this with the Bulls yesterday, but if he was on a team that that had better defense and played a little bit slower of a pace, I think his reputation in the league would be a lot better. So that's why I say I think right now, DeAndre Ayton is a cup below Rudy Gobert, but I love the conversation. I do think it is the ultimate, you know, comparison of two players. I don't think this is even close. Rudy Gobert is a better player. Yeah. And I understand that DeAndre Ayton had a career year. Um, I was a hundo P against drafting DeAndre Ayton. And I think you're seeing why, because DeAndre has never been tested. Mm -hmm. And now he gets tested And he completely collapsed during the NBA playoffs. He got out-rebounded by Luka Doncic in a series. That's crazy to me, coming off of a career year. And when you look at his numbers, yes, he averages 17 points a game. Um, Yes, he had a career year in field goal percentage. That's all well and good. DeAndre Ayton is not a guy that wants to bang. He's not a killer. And the one thing I can always say about Rudy Gobert is he wants to block every single shot that's taken by by the opponent. Yeah, Every single shot he wants to block it. He wants every single rebound. I wish Rudy was tougher. I wish Rudy Gobert was meaner. I wish Rudy wanted a street fight. But he's not that guy. And neither is DeAndre Ayton. But the thing that I can count on from Rudy Gobert, I know what I'm going to get every single night from Rudy. I'm going to yeah. get elite rim protection. I don't know what I'm going to get from DeAndre Ayton. I get a, a guy that, frankly, doesn't have a whole lot of want to on defense, and I think a lot of that is DeAndre Ayton simply lacks you know, sharp defensive instincts. He doesn't stay attached to his guy. You know, The other thing I hate about DeAndre Ayton's game, he, he doesn't catch the ball well. Like when he's in traffic, forget it. He's not catching the ball. If you throw him a lob up at the rim, he's going to catch it every time. Yeah. If you throw him a chest-high pass in traffic, you're probably 60% of the time. He is not a good catcher of the ball, and he doesn't have strong hands. And I think that is something that he has to vastly improve on. And DeAndre Ayton has to want to kill people. That really is the one thing that's missing in his game. If DeAndre Ayton would bring this offensive package with intensity on defense, this wouldn't be a conversation. He's an assassin. Yeah, but it is a conversation because DeAndre Ayton doesn't bring a killer instinct. And 
you know, frankly, Jake, when I look at the Phoenix Suns and, and this situation with DeAndre Ayton, I think it is imperative that they move on from this this drama. They have to to thrive and get back to competing for championships. Because let's be honest about the Phoenix Suns, Jake. Yeah. I don't think they competed for a championship this year. No, I mean, they took a step back. There's no doubt. And, and, and listen, with all due respect to Dallas, Phoenix should have beat Dallas. And, and I think that... You know the 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 fifty point embarrassment that was that elimination game or whatever. I think the only reason that happened is because they fell apart a, as a team. Like if you if you watch this show regularly or if you follow the Jazz regularly, you know we talked all about how you know Rudy in the locker room had some some moments this this season. There's yeah. no really other way to put it, and I think that that same dynamic was at play in Phoenix once the con- uh, once the contract situation. Uh, began for DeAndre Ayton yeah. once the Suns yeah. didn't want to give him that money. And, and I think your point about him not catching the ball, I think that might be one of the single biggest differences in these two players. Because Rudy Gobert is, if not the best rebounder, one of he's a top five rebounder in the league, no doubt about it by anybody's measure. And I think that the, the Jazz don't ask Rudy to catch the ball a ton. Like they don't obviously use him offensively the way the Suns use DeAndre Ayton offensively. So I guess from that standpoint, it's not necessarily a fair comparison. But I I know, like you were saying, hey, Rudy's consistent. You know what you're getting. You know you're getting 20 boards out of Rudy like basically every single night. And if it's not 20, it's like 17, 18. And for me, that consistency in his game is really valuable to teams that are set up to cater to his style of play. I'm not saying that Rudy Gobert is the best big in the league. I'm not saying that. I think there are guys ahead of him in that standpoint. But what I am saying is that when you compare him against DeAndre Ayton, I would rather have Rudy Gobert. And By I, a lot. And I think Rudy could thrive again. Yeah. I just want to say this again. As far as trades are concerned, he would thrive in Chicago. He would thrive in Toronto. I, he'd thrive I, in Phoenix. Yeah. I think if Rudy Gobert was on the Phoenix Suns, he'd be a different player. And yeah. I, I, I think, you know, frankly speaking, I think DeAndre Ayton could thrive with Utah. The problem is – the Jazz are not good defensively. Mm-hmm. And, you know, making that trade doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind. I'm not saying that's going to happen or even been discussed. Yeah. But when we compare these two, I think Rudy Gobert is a guy that can fit on a in a couple of situations. He needs to be on a team that's an offensive juggernaut, frankly. Um, but I look at DeAndre Ayton, he just needs to be better. Monty Williams doesn't clash with a whole lot of guys. DeAndre Ayton and Monty Williams don't like each other. They don't respect each other, and it's got to come to an end. Yeah. And if I'm the Phoenix Suns, I'm trying to get that deal done as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. And it's probably a sign and trade, but I think we've also talked about this ad nauseum on the show. This is why the Suns didn't pick up his fifth-year option. Yep. Remember that he's going into his fifth year in the league, and he's going to be a restricted free agent, and they're going to sign and trade him. Yeah. And I think it's absolutely the right move. Because they have got to find somebody who more fits with the style of Devin Booker and Chris Paul, mainly, because those two guys are killers. Those two guys play at a very high level of intensity. And to me, DeAndre Ayton just doesn't fit there. Yeah. When you're getting outplayed by JaVale McGee on, on, on in, in intensity, excuse me, when JaVale McGee is bringing more of a, a killer instinct to the floor than DeAndre Ayton, that's a problem. Because look how limited JaVale McGee is. Well, what has he got, though? Multiple rings. Because he has those intangibles that DeAndre Ayton does not bring to the floor. So I think you got to move on, mainly because Monty Williams is a great coach. And I think, hey, Monty, uh, I think Monty (laughs) Williams is the priority there. And this is one of the very few situations, and I think we've talked about this a lot, too. This is one of the very few situations where the coach – has more pull than the star player. Yeah. Which you don't see very often in the NBA or in any sport, but it goes to tell you about where DeAndre Ayton stands with this team. Now, having said that, you look at Rudy Gobert, Jake, I think when the day that he's not wearing the note on his chest anymore, that's going to be a significant day for the Utah Jazz. And it's going to be a real test of who remains on this roster, specifically Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Because much like, DeAndre Ayton, Rudy Gobert is a huge part of what the Utah Jazz have done over the last what ten years. Yeah, I mean, really. it, I, I mean, it's. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say it's an end of an era when when they do trade yes. him. And I think that I, I I think that 
on the show, it's no secret. We get a lot of heat for what we say about Rudy, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to shy away from that. I still think that his offensive shortcomings really hurt him as far as league leaders and, you know, you know how far the Jazz could have gotten with their current roster and, and all those things. But I think, you know, in the parlance of this conversation, I think that Rudy, again, is an extremely valuable asset given the setup is correct. And, and again, I think we need to shy away from or get away from this concept of, well, you got to caveat it by saying he's an extremely valuable asset given the situation or given the right setup. Sure. A lot of guys are like that now. I mean, why do we why do we shame Bigs Bigs right? And we're not going to shame the three and D guy. The three and D guy is quintessential. Only works in certain setups. The difference is is that the league is gone three and D because there's so yeah. many of those guys. Yeah, you know? no kidding. So now like it's it's an accepted thing. So that's why I say like. There is a trade market for Rudy. Rudy is going, when he gets to his next team, wherever that is, he's going to put up numbers. And I think the only question, honestly, that remains for Rudy Gobert is if he'll get a championship before it's all said and done. But, you know, you, well, actually, you know what I think the main question about Rudy Gobert is? Is there any more growth in his game? That's a huge question because I, I think DeAndre Ayton's got a lot of growth potential. I think he is, I think he is just scratching the surface of who he is as a player. So I think there's a lot of growth potential in, in DeAndre Ayton. I don't know if there's any growth potential in Rudy Gobert. He may well be at his ceiling. Um, and if if that is, in fact, the case, I mean, there's a lot of general managers around this league who are going to lean into DeAndre Ayton a hell of a lot more because he's younger, he's making far less money, and he's a guy that you view as somebody that you can develop. I, I don't know. Does, does Rudy Gobert have more improving growth ability to – Add to his game. I'm. I'm not. I'm not convinced he does. Well, I mean, I think if the. the I mean, yeah, I think he could. I think he definitely could. Like I. Like I will always maintain that I think whether you're 20 or whether you're 35, you can you can get better at shooting a basketball. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's just a basic concept. I. I think that for Rudy, I don't think, and this is just based on what I've seen. I don't think there's a desire to get better offensively. I don't think that there's a belief that he needs to get better offensively. Well, wait, wait, wait. Explain that. Does he... I don't think that I don't think that dude thinks that he needs to go to the gym and work on his jump shot. I don't think he thinks, oh well, because, you know, I can't shoot the elbow jumper, that means I need to work on that. I don't think honestly, because if he did, he would come back with a jump shot. How do you explain again, and and I'm not I, I'm only comparing these two be in this particular area. How do you explain that Giannis Antetokounmpo could not shoot a basketball. It was a liability. They were playing hack at Giannis. And now, all of a sudden, over the course of two to three seasons, dude is now shooting mid-range. Dude is shooting threes. Like, he's knocking down all this stuff. I just can't get down with the idea that Rudy Gobert can't develop a jump shot. It, to me, it's a lack of desire to want to do but it. But here's the thing. For him to be a much more effective offensive player, Rudy Gobert doesn't need a jump shot. What Rudy mm -hmm. Gobert needs is the ability to dribble the ball, and he needs the ability to have a post move. And the one move that I think really shows you what, how Giannis has grown is not the, the top of the key jumper. It's the turnaround jump shot from the low block. Mm -hmm. That's the shot that Rudy Gobert does not have. That's the shot that defined an era for Shaquille O'Neal. And I think if Rudy could just dribble – I want to say he was the second lowest rated player in the NBA with his back to the basket. Yeah, my thing with that's Rudy, what's got to be. He fixed. doesn't have the athleticism. That's the problem. He doesn't have the athleticism. The only thing he's got working for him is the height. He can just shoot over you. So, yes, he could develop that. But my point is, the guy plays pick and roll so much. It's an obvious. It's an obvious asset in his game to be able to pick and pop instead of roll in certain situations. Oh, sure, and, sure, and, yeah. And so yeah. to me, whether it's a push shot or whether it's a traditional jumper, like whatever whatever we want to call that, he has to have the ability to to hit a shot from just inside the free throw I, I line. just think that's asking too much. I mean, that you're asking an old dog to, to well, do new tricks. Well, what's not asking I mean, too much? Though, I, like, I, I think mean, you have to – he has to – Rudy Gobert, his development and growth at this stage of his career, because he's not young anymore, by the way, I think his development and growth at this stage of his career is footwork. And if he will improve his footwork, he'll, I mean, just body positioning with your back to the basket. He has no idea, or at least this past season, he had no idea how to use his shoulder width 
to not turn the ball over in the post. The, like the basic shit that we all work on as eighth graders. Yeah. He doesn't have that. And he doesn't have the ability to, to dribble on any level at all. When he puts the ball on the floor, he routinely gets it picked. That's an issue. And a huge issue. He's got to fix that. So when we talk about growth, I think DeAndre Ayton has far more growth potential than Rudy Gobert. I think there there's no think doubt about that. It's just because of that. the age though. I don't think it's just because of the age. I think DeAndre Ayton's a more athletic big. I think he's got he's a little bit more versatile. He with has he plays a better the game. body to add yeah. to his game. I would agree with that. So I like, think Rudy's got ten foot long legs and he his athletic ability is not natural. Yeah. He has to he has to work on that. He's gotta try. And one of the things that I think matters is it, DeAndre Ayton has touch around the rim. Yeah, DeAndre Ayton has a finger roll. He can you know, like he can finish on multiple levels. It is far more difficult to develop that kind of skill. The innate, natural, instinctive ability to put a ball in a basket is is one that you have to. If you have to work on that, if you have to practice that, if you have to learn how to be, you know, soft around the rim have finger roll, have, like, that's almost impossible to do. Yeah. And if you're not doing that early in your life, you're probably not going to do that in your 30s in the NBA. So I think the one, the 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 area of growth is footwork and just basic post-basketball for Rudy Gobert. I, the problem with DeAndre Ayton is the same thing that Rudy's dealing with. Instinctually on defense, there is a zero there for DeAndre Ayton, as I said before. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really difficult. I, I don't know if you can teach killer mentality. I actually don't think you can. You can't teach that, you know, and uh, use Mamba mentality, use, you know, Michael Jordan's killer instinct. I don't think you can teach that. Don't and drop that motherfucker. That's not who DeAndre Ayton is. He's never displayed that in his entire career. Ayton has never displayed a killer instinct. He's never displayed. DeAndre Ayton doesn't want to dunk on two dudes. Like, he doesn't want to throw down in your face and demoralize you. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. He just wants to hit a nice little teardrop jumper and trot back on defense and grab a rebound and make a nice outlet pass. And wear the poom as well. All right, cool. Like, that's who DeAndre Ayton is. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that's an issue. I do. I, I again, I, I am unchanged on this. Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, is a superior player. Yeah. I, I just think his impact on a game, their impact on the game is equal but opposite. Yeah. yeah that's very clear. I'd rather have a guy in Rudy Gobert that I can put on a team that's got offensive weaponry than have to teach a guy how to be mean defensively. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, that's my thought. All right, let's get your thoughts in here on this. Good morning, James Knight. He says, sup, lads. Leonard, Don, and Endelove, we back. LDN, good to see you. Giggity, what's up early in this morning? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Leonard says, uh, DeAndre Ayton is good but seriously inconsistent. The guy is seven foot but can't play to his height. Imagine being out-rebounded by Luka in the playoffs. That's Ugh, just funny. Brutal. So rough, dude. Brutal. <laughs> James Knight says, it wasn't 4X, but I thought Donuts was a good substitute. You're welcome. Oh. That would be amazing if you are the one that sent us Donuts. In all seriousness, I don't know, what, a month ago now? Yeah, someone's someone's got to claim credit for it, you know? Yeah, somebody. I'm telling Dude, you, are I am you done. you okay, bro? I am done with okay? spiders. I am done Catch with. Catch me outside. How about that? Dude. <laughs> I am done with spiders. God, dog. It was crawling on my leg a minute ago, and I thought I killed it, and now it was on my desk. And I, and the pr the problem is, I think I killed it, but there's no spider dead DNA on my hand, and it's but no not one's gonna a, disrespect me. I'm telling you, man, I will break your back. I will crush you, spider. I'm not afraid to die. Clearly, you're not afraid to die. When I die, I'm going to paradise. <laughs> See, and Mrs. Monty's the person that's like, "Oh, get a cup. Let's put it outside." <laughs> no. Flamethrower, bro. Flamethrower. I will burn the house down to kill us. Get the fuck out! I will burn the house down to kill a spider. And now I now I'm itching and like Woosa. Now I feel like there's spiders on like dude. There was one Just yesterday. Take it nice and easy, okay? Just relax. Huge black spider crawling on the entertainment center. Yeah. Does Jake go and kill it? <laughs> 
Yes. No. You lost it for a minute. I didn't lose it. It, I was in visual contact the whole time. I was just waiting for the right opportunity. Bo- it was one of those spiders, the jumping spiders, that are really fast. Okay, do you have to so, say that? So you, do you have, have to have time to say it that? right. You have to say it. God, you have dog. to time it right, man. Come on. Okay. Refo- <sighs> Refocus. Yeah, come on. Refocus. Yeah, okay. James Knight, if if you sent us donuts, that would have been amazing. Um, somebody, so there was a knock at the door a month ago, and that was when I was actually making money at Yelp. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm kidding. I'm in the middle of a sales cycle that's killing me. Uh, but anyway, um, I left. I did. I thought it was just Amazon dropping off a package, so I left it there. I go upstairs to get it. It's a box of donuts, hmm. and it just has my name written on it and a thank you note. Nobody else who sent it, what, nothing. Mm-hmm. Just a thanks, Monty. <clears throat> like, uh, uh, okay, I can't even shout you out. James, yeah. I actually hope it was you. Um, you know, Greg Hawkins says, sup all you blue cheese wing flat haters. Dude, Damn right. No blue cheese. Damn no right. Blue cheese. By the way, broke out the Traeger last night for some Papa bomb, Murphy's bomb. during the NBA Finals. So yes. bomb. Uh, wow, Leonard going in. Leonard says, uh, I disagree respectfully. Rudy has reached his ceiling in his career. Aiton has potential to be more. That's my view. I can respect that. I, I don't mean, disagree with that. Aiton has the potential to be a better player yeah. when it's all said and done. I just don't think it's going to happen because he's mentally soft. Leonard also says, um, we haven't seen much of his offensive game. Post game is good. Floater is nice, but he needs more uh, aggression. He gets bullied way too often but big, by big men in the league. And lastly, he's not worth $200 million, But however, I think a $185, $187 million contract is okay because his talent and promise uh, to maybe become a superstar. Yeah, you're buying future DeAndre. I would agree with that. Yeah. You're investing in his development, which yeah. is another reason he, he isn't a great fit with the, with the Jazz because yeah, they, they don't develop yeah. guys. Well, and they're not, they're not buying players for, for five years from now. It's for now. Yep. Mitchell Harding, good morning to you, man. He says, hey, fellas, I think it's uh, conclusive that Rudy is better. Not on both ends of the floor, but Rudy can take a bad team into a good team just by the way he shapes defense. Well, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I thought you were done. Aiton can't even do that. Yeah, and, and I think the, the, the conversation really is, like, when you get down to it, is, like, the, Rudy Gobert's defensive contribution outweighs DeAndre Ayton's offensive contribution. Yes. So, when again, when you look at the rebounding, when you look at the blocks, when you look at, you know, just the space that Rudy eats, he makes it difficult on a lot of offenses. And I think the baskets that he saves by hit, by playing that level of defense – are, are more significant to the outcome of a game than the baskets DeAndre Ayton is getting offensively. Well, and I think you have five, six other guys on the Suns. I mean, think about it. Book, Paul, uh, Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, Jay Crowder um, Cam Payne. Torrey like, Craig. Torrey Craig. You have a bunch of other dudes who can put the ball on the hoop. Even Biombo. I'm. My point is... DeAndre Ayton's just too mentally soft for me. Yeah. I mean, that's the and, – and, again, I, I agree that Rudy Gobert is soft, but at least he does one thing at an elite level. Yeah. DeAndre Ayton is so frustrating. 